This is the new signature entrance pavilion for MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge, Massachusetts. How do you design a signature entrance for the world famous MIT? Hi, I'm Paul Kasabian. I'm a structural engineer and I did the structural design of this new pavilion behind me. We designed it using first principle structural concepts, optimized it using AI and machine learning. It's built out of carbon fiber and glass fiber and fabricated by boat builders. Now in the early stages of any type of design and especially for unique projects like this, it doesn't start anywhere close to what you end up having as a design. Here are some ideas that we had early on. One thought I had was how about we do a reverse arch where you take two half arches, split them, move them opposite each other, and then stabilize one against the other using tension across the top. I think it's a super cool idea, not so applicable for this project, but we're gonna do that one day. Another idea I brought to the table, how about foamed aluminum? This is incredibly lightweight, air-foamed aluminum metal with solid top and bottom, and the inside is like metal foam. It's stiff, it's lightweight, super futuristic, but again, not so applicable for this project. A third approach we went into in a bit more detail was optimized reinforced concrete as a singular volumetric form. That let us play around with optimized overall form of the pavilion and also how the reinforcement could be placed within it. And the interesting part about that type of design investigation is it led us towards bringing to the table considering FRP, fiber reinforced polymers, carbon fiber and glass fiber, because what you can do with these modern materials is optimize the layout of the high strength tensile fibers within the polymer matrix. And then if we can place that in a stressed skin box shell structure, then we've got not just optimized material layout, but optimized placement of the shape to create this pavilion form that we're holding up in the air. This is actually a system that's used a lot. You'll see it in airplane wings or box girder bridges where you have this outer stress skin and internal stiffness. And for this, we knew we needed to go to specialized builders because FRP isn't used that often in the construction industry. So we approached boat builders up in the state of Maine to bring their skills to the table. One key design challenge at the time was to look at how we could optimize the placement of all of the slender columns. We thought it would be easy and we would just set up all of the different runs, bulk run overnight or a couple of days, and then, you know, optimize for all the columns. Thing is, when we looked at it, there were over 200 million runs to make. That's actually 11 to the power 8. And if we did 30 seconds a run, that's over 200 years, we wouldn't meet the design schedule. So. The way we had to solve this was by using artificial intelligence, actually machine learning, which is a type of artificial intelligence. And what we did was train a machine learning model. Now, I grew up in the 1980s and there was that fantastic movie, War Games. Shall we play a game? Oh. Yeah, let's play a game. Remember right near the end, it was running a whole set of scenarios, not all, but some on global thermonuclear war and it was learning from them. Hello, Joshua? Strange game. The only winning mood is not to play. That's cool by me. Also, did you notice it didn't even split the infinitive? So that's essentially what we did. We used machine learning, where you run some of the options to train the model. We ran about just over a thousand options to initially train the model and give it a sense of what areas it could further investigate. From there, as it got further in depth into those different zones, all of which are non-standard, non-typical, not obvious solutions to a very complex problem, we could then produce our top 10 of optimized common locations to review with the design team. Phew! So, we did a whole set of finite element analysis after that, brought on the boat builder for further analyses. They designed and finished off the details, put that into fabrication, produced two shells that came and floated down from their facility in Maine, crossed the water in through the Charles River. The River Charles separates Boston on the south from Cambridge on the north. And they removed the pieces overnight. That's where this video is coming from, which, yep, looks similar to some Star Wars. Yeah. 
And then the following morning, they lifted both of the pieces into place. Quite a stunning day. But you know what? For me, when I look at this, this is the sound I hear. And here's a video by Soso Limited, the digital lighting designers. And if you want more detail, I'll put a link to a technical paper that we had published on the project in the description link below, as well as a description and lists of all the different parties involved with this very unique, complex, but fantastic project. Hey, look, we made the cover of Architectural Record magazine. When I first visited MIT and came out of this metro station about 20 years ago, I didn't know how to get to the campus because it was just surrounded by parking lots. Now there's a set of new beautiful buildings and this pavilion points you to the, what's called the infinite corridor. It's the spine that goes to the heart of the campus. I was thrilled I could come here and do my second master's degree. I also taught graduate degree courses here while being a full-time structural engineer. And now I'm thrilled that I've been part of what is really the design of something that points to the future direction of design and construction in our industry.